Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a really cool video for you today. Going to talk about this in a little bit. But the main focus of the video today is continuing the Zoom I had with Jeff of Blue Jeans Cable and talking about their power cable. If you recall, and many of you do because you've already ordered, and I've had repeat orders from several customers already with the power cable. And I think what resonated so well with many of you guys that are high IQ audiophiles is that that first Zoom focused on, at least for me, and I know for many of you, it focused on tangible things where if you're going to buy a power cord, these should be the highest priority things, the reliability, the safety. And if there's going to be a performance delta, it's likely going to be in the quality of that connection and how much they paid attention to that. But then the fact that they wanted to do something that was better than anything out there, if they were going to do their power cord, they started to understand better the relationship of what a power cord can do versus what you need for signal cable and speaker cable. So many of these companies, especially guys that do in a garage, they're using the same conductors, same everything for their power cable that they do for interconnects and speaker cables. But those are all different requirements for the transmission. And whether you would use shielding, no shielding, uh, even the dielectric and insulation used. And if you recall in that first video, which really impressed me, is that Blue Jeans did a lot of research into the fact that you're only trying to communicate Transmi transmit that 60 hertz of power and how you can use the insulation and certain things to your advantage to either reduce RF and to um, things you wouldn't do in the interconnect realm when you're trying to pass a full signal. It actually works to your advantage to do the opposite for the power cable. So again, many of you that resonated with you and the price for those power cables is a steal compared to the high end stuff. Um, so it's been doing really well. But there's a lot more. First of all, I also did the subjective feedback for those that like actual cu customer testimonials. When I was in uh, LA, West Hollywood from Sunset Marquee, I met with Michael, who uh, was the first customer, and he's already reordered. And there's actually been a few others that have ordered and now reordered more because obviously power cables, you need more than one for your system. Uh, but there's even more for you guys that are on the fence and still wanting to know a little bit more in the Zoom, we covered everything. We even have some stuff on aesthetics and everything. But one thing I wanted to do with this short video today was an excerpt from that Zoom where we talked more about, again, the things that are undebatable in terms of measurements and physics and what they looked at in terms of those parameters and what they found valuable and not uh, that valuable and just a little more feedback of what went into it because so many of these companies that make power cables you ask them and they they freeze up well, why is it better what is so special about your cable they really can't tell you why um, at least they've done the research to say if you're going to get a performance delta it's going to be because of one of these things that they've addressed and again, regardless of cost, some of these cost no object cables don't have any of that pedigree behind them, uh, from the conductors to the connection to the science and the quality control testing. So I wanted to at least give you another excerpt. There's still going to be even more, but here's something I wanted to get to this first, as well as Florida Audio Show. At the Florida Audio Show, the Bach will be there. Not this one, the Grand. I'm going to have a special video on this. This costs no object, no holds barred for people that want the best of the best DAC. This is a six-channel DAC, point-to-point -point wiring, linear power supply. Uh, but in Tampa, you're going to be able to hear the next version audio uh, down, which in some respects, the chassis is uh, solid billet aluminum with no uh, seam showing. For most people, that's the cost no object uh, option that they choose. Uh, but I'll have a special one on this because this one is used by people like David Chesky and others for recording purposes. And it's got a cool design. This is going to be in, uh, the Bach will be in Tampa. So stay tuned for that. But also what will be in Tampa, tying this all in, I'm going to do, I talked to Val with a Cora. I'm going to do one night after hours. You know, he always has his room open after hours. But for a short excerpt after hours, I'm going to kind of sponsor with him a Name That Tune Hour, where we're going to play some maybe audiophile tracks, maybe 80s tunes, and let people compete for naming that tune in the shortest time frame. Uh, no cheating with uh, Shazam. In fact, we'll probably have an app where people can all 
load the app, and then whoever chimes in first can win these prizes. And one of the things that Jeff from Blue Jeans Cable committed to doing is sending me the power a sample power cable that I can give away at Florida uh, Audio Show. So you're going to be able to see it. Maybe I'll even use it in one of the rooms that want to test out the cord. But you will be able to firsthand see the quality of that power cable and then go compare it to any other room that has cables in it. Okay, And you can see price-wise and quality construction, uh, I think you'll be impressed. But somebody will have a chance to win this one that Jeff's sending me. So stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's get back to this Zoom with Jeff. Now on the measurement side, so resistance and that inductance variable inductance at different frequencies are the two main things you were looking at. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. I mean, those are really the most important things when it comes to delivering. Cause I mean, like I said, with, you don't worry about capacitance because you've got a huge capacitor bank, you know, at every power supply. So it's, it's, it's such a big number going in that it's, you know, it doesn't matter really what the ca the cable is. So you don't have to worry about that aspect in the design. Um, it ends up often being low because um, you want with particularly with this kinds of stuff, you know, part of the reason why this is big, but it's also flexible is the kind of industrial grade jacketing. And that's the safety thing again, right? I want people to be able to step on this and not change the spacing here. And because of that, there's actually like greater distance between the conductors. So it actually does have a lower capacitance than, you know, the Built the cord that comes with your device probably does, but it doesn't really matter, right? So I don't care. It's just kind of an interesting side note about it. Um, but yeah, obviously um, the resistance thing is again, like anything else, it's related to distance, right? So, you know, maybe, you know, for your three foot that's for um, your CD transport, 10 gauge probably is more than you need. But um, if you're going seven feet with your power ramp, I think 10 gauge is worth investing in for sure so yeah you do offer multiple gauges um options and i have that on my website uh and then we can give guidance in general amplifiers you'd probably be the only thing that would need and subwoofer probably get the higher gauge is that what you what would you recommend yeah or if you have um you know like a, a you know, a power conditioner where everything's running through that, right. that would probably be a good one for a 10 gauge, I would guess. Um, or, you know, a particularly longer length. Okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, we might have talked about it in the prior one, but it piggybacks on the power cable side. People always say, if you improve the measurements, now you talked about improving the measurements for other things, but even when you talk about just the last six feet going into the gear or some people say the first six feet coming out of the gear. Anyway, if you do theoretically improve the resistance of the last six feet, and then you've got 15 feet or 30 feet to your panel, if you do have better metrics in that last six feet, it ends up improving the metrics on that entire run. Now, whether that's audible, whether your gear is going to reflect anything that's audible in that, I, I agree that that could be debatable. But the theory is, if you do change and improve the metrics of resistance on the last six feet, am I correct in saying that the entire run's resistance measurement would be improved as well? And potentially voltage sags or anything could relate to some improvement. Not likely, but at least in theory. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, it's not water through, flowing through a pipe, right? It's not like the, the, there's some choke point in which every you know, all of your current flow is just has to like, you know, now be reduced in order for that to work. Every piece of that run is a mathematical formula in itself. It's distance divided by, you know, resistance. And so, you know, you can improve what you can improve. I mean, yeah, if you can have a dedicated circuit, if you can have some electrician run really good stuff for you, that's great. You should do that if you can. But Every little part of every, I mean, I talk about this with um, uh, data cabling too, Ethernet. A lot of people would, you know, come and they'll be like, well, I already have all this Cat 5e run through all of my walls to my router. Like, why should I use a Cat 6 to go uh, from the wall to the streamer? And it's like, well, because the, you know, every, you know, it's a calculation for each section that you're working with. So improve what you can improve 
and that will make your whole run to be that much better. Yeah, and it's really what it's the difference between high end and just regular stereo system. I mean, you it's like buying a Rolex versus and we're not talking about Rolex leaving level pricing, but you're putting that extra attention to the construction and qualitative things that, yeah, it might still do the same as another power cord, but you're giving yourself every potential element to improve things. And that's what people want to see. And again, the difference is you're doing Rolex level construction, but still charging Timex level prices. And that's why I'm so happy to you know, represent you in this kind of product because it's very rare to see that in the hobby. People will put the price tag and give you Timex <laughs> of a Rolex mm -hmm. and that's more prevalent than the reverse. So yeah, I'm very glad to focus on these aspects of the power cord. And, you know, it's, it's just a power cord. We don't have to spend hours talking about power cord, but you focused it on stuff that I think are really important. So I'm glad we did this Zoom.